So let's talk just a little bit about the uh, Nintendo Pal World um, situation, right? So Nintendo and the Pokemon Company are suing Pal World, they announced. Curiously, it's not over the designs. I think a lot of people looked at the different Pals, um, compared them to some of Game Freak's Pokemon models, and said, hey, there's some similarities here. I think they might have been ripping off Pokemon. Um, Nintendo is not going that route. Um, the Pokemon Company is rather suing them on patents. They are infringing upon patents. Let's just kind of go into this a little bit. So the reason I think they went for patents, personally, is because I think it would be too easy for Pal World to argue it's a satire. I mean, you know, they, they look like Pokemon, um, but aren't quite. They use guns. You can eat them. Um, I think it's it would be too easy to essentially say no. This is a parody of Pokemon. Um, this is this is satirical, and have it be you know completely legal if you're doing it that way. I think that would be a, an upward battle for Nintendo. I think if they could if they could in Discovery maybe get their hands on like the the Pal World model data and found that one of those models had a digital signature from like a Game Freak dev. And they had proof that they just straight up ripped the model and, and did a little bit of whittling on it, but it's still made by the Game Freak devs. Like, I could see that being enough to sink them on that. That that's such a fishing expedition. I, I can't imagine that that would have been a smart move um, for Nintendo's lawyers. So, patents make more sense. Um, and there's a few reasons for this. One of them being, and I think honestly the biggest reason, is that Nintendo has a lot of them. Nintendo has thousands of patents. I, I was just reading today um, in Games Radar. Um, they were speaking to... Who was this? They were speaking to analyst Sirkin Toto, who is CEO of Japan game industry consultancy Kantan Games. So he's a, he's a CEO of a Japanese game consultancy. Um, game industry consultancy. Uh, and he was saying here that Nintendo is essentially picking like Nintendo has enough patents that they can pick and choose where they target when they sue um, the way he put it was essentially that um, Nintendo sued Japanese mobile gaming powerhouse Colopal in 2017 I hope I said that correctly um, over several patent infringements and eventually won 3 billion yen which is about 21 million dollars plus licensing fees that are still being paid to this day Quote, it took them four years, and in the end, it was basically a settlement, but Nintendo won, and they sued them on the ground of six patents, Toto says. So, that leads to, like, the second reason why I think it makes sense to sue on patents, which is Nintendo has a track record of succeeding when it comes to suing patents, um, this being one example. Uh, but something that I think is interesting that Sirkin mentions is, and this is true, Nintendo owns thousands of patents. Thousands of patents! And these patents are for, you know, designs, software uh, designs, hardware designs, you know, any gameplay mechanics, just so much stuff. And as he put it, and I think this is the most succinct way for him to put it, um, Nintendo could have sued the entire video game industry, or sued half of the gaming industry back in 2017. But no, they, they only did that. Like, that's what he's trying to get at. They sued that Japanese mobile gaming powerhouse, and they won and they're still getting licensing fees paid to them, but they had enough patents, they could probably have sued half the, half the games industry. Patents can be very toxic to any kind of creative industry, I feel. Any industry at all, honestly. Because um, it can really stifle creativity. I remember two examples when it comes to Bandai Namco, famously. Um, they had patents for the, uh, the system in Gradius, you know, where it's like you pick up an item and then it increases, like the more items you pick up, the more better better upgrade you can get. Um, it's a very specific system you use, the upgrade, the power-up system in Gradius, and Bandai Namco had a patent on that, and they had a patent on minigames on loading screens. And, like, nobody could make a game that had minigames on their loading screens for years because Bandai Namco owned the rights to that, which is just utterly frustrating right it's such a like specific patent yet vague like what kind of mini games what well it didn't matter mini any mini game any kind of interaction on a loading screen was apparently too much 
um, at least too much to risk getting you know sued over that patent. So I feel when I think about this strategy, um, and I guess I guess the other thing that needs to be mentioned too is I think the reason why Nintendo chose to sue Pal World is because Pal World is trying to expand into the markets that the Pokemon company is comfortable in. You know, when they were sticking to their own thing and they were like, oh, you know, we're going to make a video game. It's going to be on PC and like Xbox. It's great. And once they started being like, okay, we're releasing it on more platforms. Okay, we're getting an anime. Okay, we're getting merchandising and, you know, um, stuffed animals of your favorite pals. That, I think, is where Pokemon Company said, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. That's what we do. That's our sector, okay? We make the stuffed animals. We have the anime. Like, that's that's our thing, okay? Like, that, you don't, you don't touch that. So I think when it was just a video game and it was just a smaller thing, I don't think Nintendo cared too much. But once they realized that Power World, one, was highly successful and made almost half a billion dollars, and two, was starting to expand into the same areas that Pokemon has been very successful in, they kind of said, okay, time to put a kibosh on all this. Now, I think, um, and once again, there's going to be a lot of armchair lawyering that's going to go on, you're going to hear. I don't pretend to understand, like, the Japanese patent system and the justice system, just if I were to think about it, I would think that Nintendo's lawyer's plan here would be to bury, you know, um, Pal World, Pocket Pair, the developers of Pal World, in patents. If Nintendo has thousands of these things, then it shouldn't be too hard for them to, ha to pull up a few of them um, and say, hey, in Pal World, this, 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 and this, you know, infringes upon multiple different patents we own. And I think if you're a judge or something, one patent is kind of like, okay, well, that might be a bit petty. Two, you know, maybe. But if you, if someone makes something and infringes upon, oh, say, like five or six or more patents, at a certain point, you got to wonder, are any of these patents, like, worth the, pinner, the, the paper they're printed on? Um... You know, I feel like for the protection of the patent system, it might come to a point where if you can, if you, you know, why patent all that stuff if you can just toss out, you know, six or seven patents all at one time just because, you know, um, they're all not legitimate. I just feel like it'd be a little bit more difficult for the judge to, the more patents you pile on, I think the harder it is for the judge to say, oh, all of them aren't valid um, in this instance. So it might be the case that Nintendo's lawyers are planning to bury Pocket Pair in enough patents where there's no way that at least one of them doesn't stick. I also know that they had, I believe there was a patent for the mechanic of uh, throwing Pokeballs, essentially, you know, like a third-person kind of pers open-world pers perspective, um, which they patented not too long before Pal World came out, I believe. It was for Legends Arceus, I would imagine. Um... And that might be one that they'd be pulling out. And that one's very specific, so that they might have something of a case on that, but I, I really wouldn't know. Point is, though, obviously people are concerned because if Nintendo does win this, it does, depending on what patents it is that they are using, it does make a lot of other people feel probably a little bit more concerned about releasing their own Pokemon-style games because you don't know if Big N is going to come down on you. Now, I do think... As Sir Toto noted here with this lawsuit that happened with this mobile gaming powerhouse back in 2017, Nintendo could have sued a bunch of people. Nintendo could sue so many people all the time, everywhere if they wanted to. They could be the most obnoxiously disruptive company in the industry. I'm sure there's a thousand different indie games. I mean, the thing is, Nintendo is so influential to the games industry that a vast chunk of what they have made and what they do is going to be if not wholesale at least very you know partially taken and in put into other games as you know just because those people play those games they're inspired by those systems and they put them in so much of the video game industry has been built off of nintendo's legacy and i'm not just trying to talk them up the same is with sony and to a lesser extent but still with microsoft and many other companies like sega and capcom etc but a lot of this industry, and especially its innovation, is built off of the back of Nintendo's R&D division. And if they have patents for so much stuff, and so much of that stuff is put into other people's games, Nintendo could just keep, you know, doing this forever. 
But I think they're very targeted about this. I think Nintendo knows that if you just do this to every indie game ever, you know, if you do this to Temtem or you do this to Cassette Beasts, then you're just getting too petty and you're not even going to get like any money out of those, you know? At that point, it's just kind of like, it's, it really is just going to be a waste of time. It's not going to be worth, you know, the legal paper you're, you're printing it on. So I think in this case, if something makes half a billion dollars and it is threatening your cash cow, I mean, Pokemon is, if I'm not mistaken, the highest grossing media franchise in the history of the planet Earth. So like this isn't kind of, this isn't like something Nintendo wants to mess around with. Like you come for Pokemon, you come for, you know, the cash cow. The, the big piece of Nintendo that they, you know, their biggest merchandising piece, too. It's not just video games. Pokemon is a media powerhouse, not just video games. So I think that's the main reason why. So I think even though if Nintendo were to win this lawsuit and its patents were to be protected, I think even if that were to be the case, I don't necessarily know if that would be a danger for um, other indie game developers and such who are doing this, but it would definitely tell us that if you fly too close to the sun, Nintendo will burn you. And that's not really a healthy thing for the industry, but, you know, God knows. It's, it's the... I don't know. I don't know anything about the, ju the Japanese justice system. I don't pretend to, so it's hard for me to say. Um, but I will be very interested. In, you know, obviously, like everyone, I'll be keeping an eye on it. I don't imagine this will be quick. If you know anything about Japan, nothing in Japan moves quickly um, when it comes to bureaucracy or anything like that. So I imagine this will drag its heels for years, I would, I would think. Um, don't know much about the Japanese justice system, but I know every, I'm, I live in Japan and everything in Japan moves at half the speed it needs to. Um, and somehow everything works regardless. So this will be an interesting one to look at. I definitely think this is one that um, we should... Everyone should be aware of, not con not constantly looking at, because I don't think there's going to be a lot of movement on it, but I think everyone should be aware of this, because once the ruling does come down, I think it's going to create some shockwaves, um, and that's worth keeping in mind. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think um, about this whole situation, if you think Nintendo should win, um, if you think Nintendo should lose, if you think if you, if you think this is good or bad for the industry, etc., just kind of let me know. Um, but yeah, that's all I really wanted to talk about right now. So this has been Unending Quantry saying thank you for listening and or watching. And uh, I'll see you again real soon.